Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now let's talk about triple core processors. Original 3-core Phenom CPUs from AMD were actually quad cores that had essentially gone wrong. It may have been that one core was defective or maybe just disabled and instead of tossing these in the trash they were marketed instead. To be honest, I think it made for a good idea. It reduced waste, and whilst these may have been seen by some as a gimmick, the reduced price and mere fascination with them was enough for AMD to release another generation in the form of the Phenom 2. Unlike the first generation, some of these CPUs were able to support unlocking of the fourth core, meaning that if you got lucky, you would have paid triple core money for a quad core processor. Unfortunately, this didn't apply to all of them, and it was essentially a shot in the dark. To put it plainly, if you wanted a quad core, it was probably worth just going out and buying a quad core. These triple cores were much better than the first and can actually be found for a very good price on eBay. Take the Phenom 2 X3710 for example, the first of AMD's second gen triple cores. Essentially it's just the X4955 quad with the aforementioned fourth core disabled. Taking a look at a couple of games here and you'll see the difference between leaving it stock and unlocking that fourth core. To state the obvious, I'd actually estimate about a 25-30% to 30 difference in real world performance. A couple of years later, an AMD released the Lano range of APUs. These APUs were basically just processors that included a reasonable onboard graphics chip capable of gaming without the need of a discrete GPU, mainly targeted at builders of low power systems or budget gamers. I myself had the dual core A4 3300. Along with these APUs came the next 3 core offering in the form of the A6 3500, clocked at 2.1GHz and with the onboard graphical power to match something like an 8800 GT from Nvidia. The thing with these though is that they couldn't be unlocked and they didn't offer much in the way of difference over the dual core Lanos except a higher price. Gaming performance was pretty much identical and the A8 quad cores only cost a little bit more. Now as you can see from these tests here it did okay and if you paired it with a slightly beefier graphics card than that of the onboard one then you'd have a pretty decent budget gaming setup that would most likely still run games fairly well today. Interestingly enough this would be the last triple core processor to be released. The thing is they were all accidental and a smart marketing strategy saved them from just being discarded. Intel on the other hand never had any triple core CPUs and it's unlikely we'll see any more from either company. Not necessarily marking a death but more of a dormancy. I think they're interesting and in those situations where two cores aren't enough and four cores aren't quite in your price range they would potentially make for a decent middle ground. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's something a little bit different, but I thought taking a look back at triple core CPUs, which aren't in production anymore due to no mishaps in the factory or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> but either way, I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Those triple core CPUs that can be found can be found at a very good price. Some of them are actually very rare and you'll probably have a hard time finding them. But like I say, those that you can find will still make decent enough CPUs in any budget gaming system. So thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like it all that much, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.